kaisa pagsulong narito ako para sa pagwawas to pagdaluyong narito ako para ang galat na lahat na pulo magiging muong na buo. Good afternoon, international comrades and to our migranteng kababayans. Magandang gabi naman po dyan sa inyo sa Pilipinas at mapagpalayang pagbati po para sa ating lahat. Bago po namin upisa ng discussion, marin po namin kinokondena ang pag-aresto sa mga aktivistang uh, na inaresto noong uh, nakaraang araw dahil sa pagpaprotesta nila sa pa, um, bilang pagsiselebrate o pagpaprotesta para sa uh, Pride 2020. Kaya ang aming pong panawagan dito sa ND Line Online ay palayain o Free Pride 20. So um, bumalik po tayo sa ating diskusyon. Welcome to the National Democratic Online School, Philippine Society and Revolution with Tito Jo. Last week, we have discussed the three fundamental problems of the Philippine society. So if you have missed it, you could find it posted on our Nakbayan Europa page. So now we will be continuing our discussion as we will tackle today the last part of the Philippine Society and Revolution, which is the People's Democratic Revolution is the only solution. But hold on to us, dahil tuloy pa rin ang ating serye, dahil next week we will be having a new topic, which is especial na kuro sa pangmasa. So make sure to notice on your calendars and catch updates on our Facebook page and our Facebook group, ND Line Online. So please, patuloy po tayong mag-imbita ng ating mga kaibigan, kapamilya, at makisali at makialam sa ating mga diskusyon. If you have question to Tito Jo, just drop it on the comment box or the chat box. And later, after the discussion, we will have a question and answer portion which Tito Jo can answer your question. So um, let's cut it off. Uh, let's now start the discussion. Please welcome Filipino writer, activist, and internationalist, and NDFP consultant, Tito Joma Season. Hi, Tito. Mapulang pagbati po sa inyo. Kamusta po kayo? Okay. Hello daw po. Greetings uh, po. Greetings. Dear fellow activist, I'm glad to be with you again. This is the last part of our uh, series on Philippine society revolution. And um, ex I extend to you my... Uh, warmest congratulations for being uh, for participating in the concluding part of the series. All right, Tito. Thank you so much. Um, so first question, Tito. What are the aims of the National Democratic Revolution and how is it different from other revolutions that have happened throughout the Philippine history? Uh, the most important aim of the National Democratic Revolution is to achieve full national independence and people's democracy. The old democratic revolution of 1896 was led by the liberal bourgeoisie and was aimed at building a bourgeois democratic republic. This time, the new democratic revolution is led by the working class and is aimed at proceeding to the socialist revolution in consonance with the era of modern imperialism and the world proletarian revolution. The revolutionary leadership of the working class and its vanguard party 
ensures that the new democratic revolution has a socialist perspective. It takes a socialist direction and is in the preparation for the socialist revolution. With the peasantry as the main force of the revolution, it is certain that the main content of the democratic revolution is fulfilled with the satisfaction of the peasant demand for agrarian revolution. But the line is set for agricultural cooperativization and mechanization in socialist society. All right, Tito. Why is it necessary to the revolution to study the different classes in the Philippine society? It is necessary to study the different classes in Philippine society in order to know who are the friends and who are the enemies of the revolution. The friends of the revolution are the working class, the peasantry, the urban petty bourgeoisie, and the middle bourgeoisie. They are the motive forces of the revolution. The enemies of the revolution are the comprador big bourgeoisie, the landlord class, and the bureaucrat capitalist. They are the forces of counter-revolution that wish to perpetuate the ruling system of oppression and exploitation. All right, Tito. Uh, can you please discuss the different classes in the Philippines and how do we determine who is the enemy and who are our friends in struggle? In the long course of the People's Democratic Revolution, the enemy classes are the Comparador Big Bourgeoisie, the landlord class, and the bureaucrat capitalist. The Comparador Big Bourgeoisie is the chief financial and trading agent of the U.S. and other imperialist countries. The landlord class perpetuates private ownership of land and subject the peasants and farm workers to feudal and semi-feudal conditions of exploitation. The bureaucrat capitalists are the political agents of the big compradors and landlords, but they have become a distinct class by accumulating power and wealth by using their governmental authority. They have gained notoriety as political dynasties wanting to perpetuate themselves in power in order to accumulate private capital and land. The big compradors, landlords, and bureaucrat capitalists are considered the class enemies because they exploit the people, especially the workers and peasants, and they use the semi-colonial state to oppress the people and keep them within the bounds of the ruling system through violence and deception. Within the framework of the broad United Front policy and tactics, the CPP refers to these class enemies as the reactionary classes in order to focus the term enemy on the most reactionary clique that is in power, meaning to say the Duterte regime at the moment. The sharpening of the term is meant to take advantage of the splits and uh, among the reactionaries and narrow the target of the revolution to the ruling reactionary clique as the enemy in a given period. I have previously explained that the friends of the revolution are the following. A. The working class as the leading class from the new democratic stage to the socialist stage of the Re Philippine revolution. B. The peasantry, essentially the poor and middle peasants and the seasonal farm workers as a main force or democratic majority of the people and see the middle social strata of the urban petty bourgeoisie and the middle bourgeoisie. They are the friends of the revolution because they constitute the people and are the motive forces of the revolution. Their needs and demands are expressed in the program of People's Democratic Revolution, and they participate in, in the revolution in order to realize uh, their program of the revolution. Their participation in the revolution spells the growth and advance of the revolution towards victory. All right. Tito, why are the workers, um, the, why are the workers the called hukbong mapagpalaya or the leading class of the revolution? The working class is the leading class of the revolution because it is the most advanced, productive, and political force among the various classes in Philippine society and in the world. It is the class that can sustain and further develop the industrialized economy, even without the bourgeoisie. The workers cannot be dispensed with uh, in, industri in any industrial economy, capitalist or socialist, but the bourgeoisie can be dispensed with. Uh, uh, it is in the 
it, it, the working class is indispensable in the development of an industrialized socialist economy, even as uh, that is the case in capitalism. It is the class that is capable of overthrowing the state power of the bourgeoisie and replacing it with the state power of the proletariat and fulfilling the historic mission of socialist revolution and construction. The working class is the most developed theory for revolutionary change and the accumulated practice of leading successful socialist revolutions. The theory and practice of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism encompasses philosophy, political economy, and social science. The working class has created the Communist Party as the vanguard party focused on revolutionary theory and practice on the basis of the revolutionary mass movement. The Communist Party is the instrument of the working class for leading the revolution from the People's Democratic stage to the stage of the Socialist Revolution. All right. Tito, why are the peasants the pangunahing puersa or the main force? The peasant class, who are, who are, which consists mainly of the poor and middle peasants and traditional seasonal farm workers, are still the most numerous class in the Philippines and comprise the democratic majority of the people. The satisfaction of the demand for land through agrarian revolution is the main content of the revolution. The protracted people's war in the new democratic revolution is possible in the Philippines because the peasant class has provided the people's army with the social and physical terrain as the widest area of maneuver for the people's war against the enemy that is superior in terms of military personnel, equipment, and training before the People's Army gains the upper hand by capturing the weapons from the enemy. The actual social investigation and class analysis done by the CPP belies the claim of the enemy that the Philippines is already a newly industrialized country, even without having the capability to produce industrial capital goods. The trick of the enemy is to claim that of the 45 million labor force or manpower in the Philippines, 58% are workers in the service sector and 19.1% are workers in the industry sector. Thus, the working class is now supposedly 77.1%, while the peasantry has dwindled to 19.1% without the need of genuine land reform and national industrialization. The purpose of the enemy in making the peasantry dwindle and disappear is to control the illusion that industrial development is already removing the ground for protracted people's war. The statistical trick of the enemy is to credit the import dependent service sector bloated by neoliberal financing with the employment of most of the rural and urban odd jobbers in the informal economy who are outflows of the rural surplus population who still maintain connections with their peasant families and who seasonally work with them during planting and harvest periods. The bourgeoisie can further make the peasants disappear by considering the family head as the only peasant in the family by denying the fact that every able-bodied member of the peasant household, including children, participate in uh, uh, participates in agricultural work and by making no differentiation between the few whole year farm workers who operate agenda machines and warehouses on the, on the one hand and the traditional seasonal farm workers who have existed since biblical times on the other hand. All right. Tito, what is the Communist Party of the Philippines and what role does it play in the National Democratic Revolution? The Communist Party of the Philippines is the advanced detachment or vanguard party of the Filipino working class. It is the principal instrument of the working class for leading the National Democratic Revolution and then the Socialist Revolution. The role of the CPP is to build itself as an ideological, political, and organizational instrument of the working class and to realize the class leadership of the working class in the entire revolutionary movement of the people. As the ideological instrument of the working class, 
The CPP is guided by Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, and has applied this theory on the history, circumstances, and revolutionary practice of the proletariat and people. As political instrument, it has formulated the general line of people's democratic revolution through protracted people's war and with a socialist perspective, and has done the political work to build itself, the people's army, the revolutionary mass organizations, the United Front, and the revolutionary organs of democratic power. As the organizational instrument, it has built itself organizationally under the principle of democratic centralism in order to make collective decisions on the basis of democracy. Tito, why is it erroneous to put the principal stress of mass work in the cities instead of in the countryside? Can you elaborate on the importance and balance of organizing in the cities and in the countrysides? As far as I know, there has never been any CPP policy to put the principal stress on mass work in the cities instead of in the countryside. The objective fact is that historically and currently, the urban-based mass movement has been the source of workers and educated youth redeployed for mass work or assignment to the People's Army in the countryside. The policy of the CPP has uh, always been to dispatch party cadres and uh, member and mass activists to the countryside from the cities in order to help strengthen the CPP, the People's Army, the mass organizations, the local organs of political power, and the United Front. To favor mass work in the countryside, the CPP has always stressed that the general line is people's democratic revolution through protracted people's war, and that the principal form of struggle is the revolutionary armed struggle, which aims to overthrow the ruling system. The CPP has always expected that the more revolutionaries from the cities joining their comrades in the countryside, the faster would the armed revolution develop and build the people's democratic government in the countryside until this can get rid of the government of the big compradors, landlords, and corrupt bureaucrats in the cities. The strategic line of protected people's war is to accumulate political and armed strength in the countryside until it becomes possible to overthrow the urban-based counter-revolutionary state. Tito, is armed revolution necessary? History has shown that the proletariat has never won a new democratic revolution and establish socialism without armed revolution. There has never been a case of the bourgeoisie giving up its, its state power and its private ownership of the means of production voluntarily and peacefully. The necessity of armed revolution is not due to any one-sided desire of the proletariat to use armed revolution. It arises because in the first place, the bourgeoisie uses its class dictatorship or its organized system of violence called state power to prevent the proletariat from establishing socialism. Tito, is participating in the parliamentary struggle important? Of course, it's important to participate in the parliamentary struggle. Whenever there is space for participation in parliamentary struggle within any bourgeois ruling system, the communists and other progressives avail of, the, of that space when possible in order to push for reforms without becoming reformist and in order to indicate the need for revolutionary change. Parliamentary struggle has its own distinct importance. It facilitates the spread of the program of struggle for national and social liberation. It contributes to the efforts to arouse, organize, and mobilize the people for that, for that struggle. But the genuine communists and revolutionaries are ever vigilant against the counter-revolutionary policies and acts of the reactionary classes. Tito, what are the three forces of the revolution and what are the roles of each one? The three weapons of the Philippine Revolution are the Revolutionary Vanguard Party of the Proletarian, Revolutionary Armed Struggle, and the United Front. These are embodied by the Communist Party of the Philippines, the New People's Army, and the National Democratic Front, respectively. As Vanguard Party of the Proletarian, the CPP realizes best 
the leading role of the working class by building itself through ideological, political, and organizational work. The NPA integrates the revolutionary armed struggle with the agrarian revolution and mass-based building. Mass-based building involves building the revolutionary mass organizations and the local organs of political power. The NDIP does its best to help build the basic worker peasant alliance, win over the middle social strata, and take advantage of the splits among the reactionaries and isolate, weaken, and destroy the power of one enemy ruling clique after another. Can you uh, please elaborate on the task of the revolution on the following fields, like for political field, economic field, military field, cultural field, and foreign relations field? The main task of the revolution in the political field is to propagate and apply the general program of people's democratic revolution and do everything necessary to arouse, organize, and mobilize the people for strengthening the revolutionary forces and advancing the revolution towards total victory. The main task of the revolution in the economic field is to uphold national economic sovereignty, protect the national patrimony, and demand genuine land reform and national industrialization. When the revolutionary forces are effective in the countryside, they can carry out land reform from the minimum to the maximum program and other socioeconomic programs for the benefit of the people. The main task of the revolution in the military field is to fight the enemy and build the people's army as the main fighting force. The people's militia as local police force and uh, as auxiliary of the people's army and the self-defense units within the revolutionary mass organizations as active defenders of the people and reserve force for the people's army and the people's militia. The main task of the revolution in the cultural field is to promote and realize the national, scientific, and mass culture and education. The revolutionaries carry out all kinds of cultural work to raise the revolutionary consciousness of the people by undertaking study sessions, pop agit meetings, artistic works, and performances. The main task of the revolution in the field of foreign relations is to undertake campaigns of information, organizing and mobilization among the overseas Filipinos. That's what you are doing. And the host, and, and as well as the host and other peoples in various countries in order to build international solidarity and realize practical cooperation of mutual benefit among all peoples and the common struggle against imperialism and all reaction. Tito, the National Democratic Revolution has a socialist perspective. How can the transition from the people's democracy to socialism be guaranteed? The National Democratic Revolution is the preparation for the socialist revolution. Through the National Democratic Revolution, the working class and its vanguard party learned how to lead the broad masses of the people in reaching revolution, set the socialist direction of the revolution, and develop the forces and mass strength for establishing socialism. The successful leadership of the working class in the National Democratic Revolution and the revolutionary forces it has built guarantee the establishment of socialism. At the same time, there shall still be some transitional measures of a bourgeois democratic character, like completing the land reform program and integrating the patriotic bourgeoisie into joint state and private enterprises. The National Democratic Revolution is basically completed upon the seizure of political power from the bourgeoisie and other reactionary classes, and thus the Socialist Revolution can commence or begin immediately with the working class and this vanguard party building immediately the political system to unite and govern the people and taking over all the commanding heights of the economy, all strategic industries, main transport lines, and all sources of energy and raw materials. The state proceeds to build socialist industry and cooperativize and mechanize agriculture in a series of five-year plans. 
Tito, what are the major differences between people's democracy and socialist state? As in the historical example of China, the people's democratic form of government based on the worker-peasant alliance and the broad alliance of democratic forces can be maintained. But the essence and core of state power shall already be the class rule of the working class and shall be socialist. The big comprador landlord Bursa, the uh, big comprador landlord bureaucrat capitalist dictatorship shall be ended. Thus, the state power shall exist and run as the class dictatorship of the proletariat. Do you think Marxism, Leninism, Maoism will still be relevant after the National Democratic Revolution has claimed victory, and how? Marxism, Leninism, Maoism will become an even more necessary and relevant guide to the socialist revolution that follows the National Democratic Revolution. The revolutionary, the revolutionary teachings and successful practice of the great communists in the fields of philosophy, political economy, and social science will shed light on what the revolutionary proletariat and people can do with due respect to the history and circumstances of the country. The proletarian revolutionaries will be guided by Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, and apply it creatively in the concrete conditions of the Philippines in order to carry out socialist revolution and construction, combat imperialism, revisionism, and all reaction, prevent capitalist restoration, and consolidate socialism under proletarian class dictatorship until imperialism is defeated and can no longer obstruct the road to communism. Thank you so much, Tito, for answering uh, our questions. To our audience, we will now be proceeding to our question and answer portion after this break. So um, if you have questions to Tito Jo, Tito can answer it um, later after the break. Just drop it down on the comment box or the chat box, and um, we could um, sort it out for Tito to answer it. So uh, for our break, please watch Himig Dang Maghimagsik.
sa tulay at lubos na pag-asa sa imagsikan.
Yes, Mars. Ready, Tito? Ready na po. Ready. And we are now back to our discussion. So the floor is now open for question and answer. For, um, if you have question, uh, to Tito Jo, you could drop it on the comment box on our live video, or you could um, drop it down on our chat box if you were in the Zoom. So um, before anything, we would just um, like to say that na nakikiramay po kami sa pamilya at kasama ni na Jose Jerry Katologo, Elder Moyna, and Jose Arthur Clemente. Kinokon din na namin ang tuloy-tuloy na paggamit ng dahas at pagpatay ng Rehimeng Duterte sa mga magsasaka, manggagawa, at aktivista. Si, Je si Jose Jerry po ay isang opisyal na samahan na magsasaka sa ilalim ng National Federation of Sugar Workers. Binerel siya noong lunes sa Escalante City. Elder Moyna at Jose Arthur Clemente ay binaril ng isang riding in tandem sa Albay. Si Elder Moyna at Jose Arthur ay kasapi ng organisasyon na magsasaka sa Albay. At nakikiisa rin kami dito sa Anakbayan Europa sa Mariin at malakas na pagkondena sa marahas at, at hindi makataong pag-aresto sa mga kapatid natin sa bahaghari na mapayapang pag nagkilos protesta upang ipagdiwang ang Pride Month. Sinunod ang, ng ating mga kapatid ang physical distancing at pagsot ng mask habang nag mapayapang nagpapahayag ng kanila mga saloobin hinggil sa mga isyong kinakaharap ng LGBTQ sa Pilipinas. At mariin din namin pong kinokondena ang uh, police raid sa Misamis Oriental na nagresulta ng pag-aresto sa seven Lumad Mens. Uh, pinamunuan ng pag ang, ang raid na ito ni Lieutenant Noel Oclarit, Deputy Team Leader ng Criminal Investigation and Detection Group in Misamis Oriental. Uh, tigilan na po natin um, ang pag-atake at tigilan na po natin ang patayan. At ayun po, um, bumalik na po tayo sa ating discussion. Uh, meron po tayong uh, mga certain questions na in our uh, chat box. So, uh, Tito, uh, first question would be, does this pandemic affect the initiative of the New People's Army to launch tactical offense? What is your view to combat conservatism if there is any? Uh, the Duterte regime has been taking advantage of the pandemic in order to continue uh, with its uh, all-out attack, uh, all-out war policy against the revolutionary movement. And of course, he has also taken advantage of the pandemic in order to grab uh, more power. Uh, is trying to impose uh, a bill, a law, uh, that would... Uh, allow him the widest latitude for state terrorism in violation of the Constitution. And uh, he has been uh, um, uh, engaged in, uh, in uh, many abuses, main of which, uh, main, um, um, uh, mainly, uh, aside from uh, uh, the violent uh, suppression of, of the people, uh, the uh, uh, stealing of uh, large amounts of public money um, in the hundreds of billions of pesos uh, that were supposedly for uh, helping out those who lost their livelihood uh, so they could get um, uh, ayuda uh, in, in the form of uh, food assistance and some economic uh, 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 relief. But the uh, Duterte regime uh, focusing on your question, the Duterte regime uh, tried to trick the revolutionary movement at first uh, by offering uh, 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 reciprocal ceasefire between the armed forces of the NDFP and uh, the Duterte regime. But it was a trick because there was no stopping the offensives being done by the armed personnel of the regime. Uh, the AFP and PNP, and uh, so um, the revolutionary movement, the CPP, declared that uh, it cannot go, it cannot reciprocate a fake uh, offer of ceasefire. But it was, it was a good thing that uh, the UN uh, Secretary General uh, called for uh, ceasefire of uh, between warring parties and. In response to that, uh, the uh, CPP and the NPA uh, showed that what it was willing uh, to go into ceasefire. But then the offensives of the uh, of the AFP and PNP continued, and so the the 
NPA uh, uh, had to stop, uh, had, had to cease, uh, you know, uh, resting their arms. Um, so uh, the important thing is it is clear to the people that it is justified for them to fight back against the continuing uh, armed offensives of the Duterte regime. Uh, in that sense, uh, because the people understand clearly that the attacks are coming first, in the first place, from the Duterte, the Duterte regime, uh, the, the uh, people and uh, its people's army must fight back. And so the pandemic should not be uh, a hindrance uh, to the um, pursuit of armed struggle, because in the first place, it is justified by the all-out war policy of the Duterte regime. But and with regard to um, uh, the question about conservatism, well, I think that is a long-running problem, and it must be solved uh, according to the, to the publications I've already read. Uh, there is ideological and political work to solve the problem, and there are practical measures uh, to uh, deal with the problem. The problem is recognized as, you know, uh, focusing on a good thing uh, and other related good things like mass work and relate. Mass work uh, becomes an excuse for avoiding um, the uh, uh, launching of uh, offensives against the enemy. Uh, a, uh, a party and people's army uh, that are supposed to be engaged in people's war, if they do not launch tactical offensives, then, you know, they cannot gain strength. Eh? The, uh, their enemy would gain, uh, would gain ground, would gain the upper hand over them. And uh, the, um, the objective of waging armed revolution is to increase your armed strength. You start from being uh, small and weak, and the only way uh, you can... Uh, become uh, bigger and stronger is to be able to launch tactical offensives and seize the weapons of the enemy. So um, they should, uh, solutions have been made, like uh, there should be a uh, balancing. There mass works definitely should not be given up, but uh, uh, too much of it would become a bad thing. So um, the, for instance, uh, uh, with regard to the deployment of uh, units of the NPA, uh, two-thirds two -thirds should always be for uh, uh, looking for opportunities as well as developing the opportunities for launching tactical offensives against the enemy. And one-third uh, should be devoted to mass work. So, and then mass work can be done by the mass organizations anyway. Uh, as well as by the local organs of political power. So uh, there are other forces of the revolution that can attend to mass work. So that in the main, in the main, the People's Army, two thirds of it all the time, uh, is, are always ready to la launch tactical offensive. So I think that is the uh, uh, solution that has been uh, uh, arrived at by the CPP and NPA. I base myself on uh, their publications. Uh, I should not be understood as giving instructions. All right. Tito, um, next question is, why don't the Communist Party of the Philippines join the Congress and have its own party list or be represented in Senate? If the Communist Party would join any part, any branch of the reactionary government, that, that would mean surrender. That would mean giving up the armed struggle. It cannot say it is for uh, people's democratic revolution through protracted people's war, and at the same time, it directly participates. No, it cannot do that. Um, if uh, uh, the, those in the reactionary government are clever enough or uh, have enough sense, you know, the way they can uh, get the uh, CPP engaged in some cooperation and in the uh, some uh, lasting peace arrangement uh, is to agree with the CPP. Uh, they, they first agree with the CPP on 
uh, genuine land reform and national industrialization. And uh, that would be a, a very a substantial thing. But the uh, reactionaries um, do not re want uh, land reform and they want to continue uh, the uh, subordination of the economy to foreign monopoly capitalism. That's a problem that cannot be solved uh, 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 without uh, the people and the revolutionary forces doing what they can in order to win the revolution. Uh, they are being compelled by their enemy uh, to do the best they can in terms of uh, waging armed revolution. So uh, I hope the, the question is well answered because it's simple enough. Uh, can the CPP enter Congress in any way, uh, like having a party list? No. Uh, that would, uh, you see, certain people were appointed. You know, the Duterte was being tricky. He was offering four cabinet posts, and he said, oh, I'm giving this four position to the CPP. What was my answer? No, you cannot, uh, the CPP cannot accept the, your offer, but you can appoint uh, progressive people, patriotic and progressive people, uh, on the basis of their individual merits. You can appoint them as individuals, uh, not as representatives of the CPP. Because if they enter the government as representatives of the CPP, that would mean surrender. Eh? For, a, uh, for only four positions, uh, with, uh, positions where they can be removed any time uh, by this uh, bastard in power, uh, that would be too cheap a way of uh, killing a revolutionary party of the proletariat. Thank you, Tito. Um, next question, Tito. How do we explain to others that the violence of the revolution is necessary against the revolution of the state and the ruling class? Uh, uh, well, you know, uh, if we examine the history of uh, the people, uh, in their desire, uh, in relation to their desire to have full in the national independence and to uh, realize democracy, especially uh, solving the land problem, which is the main content, actually, of the democratic movement. Um, you see, uh, all that desire of the people has always been frustrated. All legal efforts are to achieve reforms uh, along the national democratic uh, line have been frustrated. And when the, uh, when the um, revolutionary force, when the progressive forces become strong enough, um, for sure, uh, the uh, armed violence of the state is always applied. Uh, let's take the example of the old Communist Party. The old Communist Party, even before the end of the war, decided to welcome uh, the return of the U.S. and uh, the um, uh, installation of uh, the semi-colonial republic. And uh, so uh, the uh, old CPP uh, hoped that they could transform the Hukbalahap, eh? the army against uh, Japan, uh, to become a veterans organization. And uh, the forces of the uh, resistance movement would happily become legal organizations participating in the uh, uh, political system. No, but then uh, the, what did uh, the U.S. do? It massacred two, two uh, squadrons of the, of the uh, Hook Balahap, which, which accompanied, which accompanied uh, the, uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, troops who uh, moved from Pangasinan to uh, Manila. And then uh, the landlords uh, uh, and the reactionary government uh, uh, created the civilian guards uh, to kill the peasants and uh, break up the land reform that was carried out uh, during the anti-Japanese resistance. So, uh, and then the Americans uh, uh, granted independence, so-called, uh, but required the Philippines first to sign the USRP, uh, Treaty of General Relations, which perpetuated U.S. economic and military control 
over the Philippines. And then um, the, uh, the U.S. Uh, pushed the reactionary government to uh, take all violent measures against the revolutionary movement. So uh, uh, the, the armed, strike, the armed uh, uh, movement had to be revived by, even by the old party. Um, at first, the old part, leadership of the party uh, did not want to revive the armed struggle, but uh, uh, most of the party cadres and uh, uh, members uh, demanded that uh, there must be self-defense and uh, there, there must be a counter uh, to the uh, violent actions being undertaken. So you see, um, uh, it's not only the existence a uh, prior existence of an organization of violence called the state. Uh, it is actually the actions of that state, the violent actions of that violent state eh, that compels the people and the patriotic and progressive forces to uh, form their own people's army and to fight back. So that has been the case. Um, you know, uh, because of the bungling of the, the leadership of the old party. So uh, the revolutionary movement was uh, beaten down in the early 1950s. But uh, what did the reactionaries and the U.S. do? Uh, they adopted the anti-subversion law to suppress uh, uh, the very fundamental rights, democratic rights and freedoms of the people in order to um, threaten uh, with violence, with arrest anyone who would think of Marxism, <laughs> Leninism, <laughs> just to just to be associated uh, with Marxism, Leninism, uh, in thought or by some uh, by some degree of organizing, uh, you could be sentenced to death under the anti-subversion law. So uh, the reactionary government, especially under the direction of the U.S. imperialism, does not give a chance to, the, uh, to uh, the communist and all other patriotic and progressive uh, people uh, in, their, uh, in their desire and in their efforts to achieve uh, full national independence and democracy uh, legally, legal, uh, all the way legal, purely legal uh, effort would be subject to violent suppression by the, uh, uh, by the counter-revolutionary state of the big compradors and landlords and the corrupt officials uh, under the direction of U.S. imperialism. The, the next question is, um, there are different strata in the peasantry. There are rich peasant, middle peasant, poor peasants, and what are the roles of each one in the revolution? Well, the... Uh, the poor and middle peasants, uh, oftentimes they do not own the land, uh, especially in the case of the poor peasants. There are some peasants who may own some piece of land, but not enough. So they have to uh, uh, sell their labor power, they become farm workers. And um, uh, the, the rich and poor peasants uh, can easily uh, be in alliance. You know, the rich peasant engages in some amount of uh, exploitation. The rich peasant has uh, probably has some five to ten hectares. Uh, he's not yet a landlord because he himself works the land, but he uses the uh, labor power of uh, other people as farm workers. So uh, his interest in the revolution is not as strong as uh, the poor and middle peasants. Uh, if uh, he's anyway, because rich peasants tend to be uh, well educated formally, uh, you know, these are the people who can send children to school, and they themselves have gone to school, at least high school or uh, some years in college before they, they uh, went back to the land to, to serve as peasants. Uh, you know, uh, their patriotic spirit can be involved, yeah? and they, they can understand, you know, well, um, uh, they understand that uh, uh, there is a need uh, for 
uh, enterprise beyond agriculture. They themselves engage in uh, uh, enterprise, like you know, re having a uh, rice milling uh, machine or some threshing machine where they have uh, earned enough. But then uh, they understand that uh, for the whole country, it's possible to industrialize the country if only the leaders were uh, intelligent and uh, and. Uh, 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 willing uh, to serve uh, the uh, national interest of uh, uh, the country in national industrialization. So um, they read the newspapers; they know the issues. So uh, they can you can uh, win them over uh, by uh, addressing their patriotic spirit. And they understand very well that even when they, they are compelled to own, to, to, uh, to buy more land, eh? For every time they earn uh, a surplus in one year, uh, there's no way eh? but to uh, buy land and have the prospect of being a landlord. No? <laughs> so uh, anyway, the rich peasant is what is called the rural bourgeoisie, the rural bourgeoisie. Um, it is, uh, however, uh, the policy of the uh, CPP not to offend them and uh, not to treat them as enemy, but to neutralize them. The formula is uh, uh, rely mainly on the poor peasants and farm workers, win over the middle peasants, and neutralize, neutralize the rich peasants in order to isolate and oppose uh, the despotic landlords. That's the line. So um, uh, this problem of, of uh, uh, at least having three strata of peasants uh, has been dealt with in the Russian and Chinese revolutions. And um, as well in the Philippines, uh, there is also a rich experience in handling the three uh, strata of the peasantry. Uh, you know, uh, uh, revolutionary cadres of the civil war sometimes can have so good relations with the rich peasants that uh, sometimes they forget about uh, doing uh, the need to do more work among the poor and middle peasants. Because, you know, the rich peasants have nice houses, eh? they cook better food, uh, and so on. No? <laughs> so, um, and they're the most influential in a village. Um, the uh, Filipino revolutionary, uh, under the direction of the CPP, has always been advised uh, concentrate on organizing and rely mainly uh, on the poor peasants and farm workers. Then win over the middle peasants and maintain friendly uh, relations with the uh, rich peasants and uh, arouse their patriotic spirit. And they are not so interested in, uh, you know, opposing the landlord. Maybe uh, it is when they oppose the landlords only because the la some landlords also still pushes them around, still push them around because they are small, eh? small landowners. All right. Tito, the next question would be, anyway, to our audience, uh, if you have question to Tito, uh, just drop it down to the comment box. And uh, the floor is still open. So if you have question, just drop it down in the comment box. And Tito, Joe can answer it. Tito, next question, Tito. Um, what are the indicators that the current proletarian revolution in the Philippines is already in the stage of strategic stalemate? Or do we have a time frame on how long it will take the proletarian revolution fr from strategic stalemate to strategic offensive? Strictly speaking, there is yet no stage of strategic stalemate. Strictly speaking, uh, the revolutionary movement, uh, the armed uh, uh, aspect of the revolutionary movement is still trying to move from what I call the middle phase to the advanced phase. Uh, it's still in the process of completing the strategic defensive. But, in a certain sense, there is already some kind of a stalemate. Uh, even if uh, does, even if it does not concern strictly with the balance of arm strength, um, the stage has been reached where the enemy cannot destroy 
Uh, this cannot destroy the people's army. At the same time, the people's army is still, is still uh, some distance away from destroying the other side. No? Um, you see, uh, it used to be uh, strategic partners of the enemy used to say, oh, uh, wherever the NPA pops up in any part of the country, the strength of the AFP is so large, is so strong, is so, so powerful that it can destroy that part. No, but uh, the problem now for the enemy, for the AFP, is that the NPA is all over the country. And uh, they are blind because they do not, the enemy is blind because it does not have the support of the people. And the NPA, so you know, um, all the requirements, all the political requirements of the revolution are already present. Okay? You have a party. You cannot stop the party because who knows where the study sessions are held eh? to, eh? to uh, strengthen ideologically the cadres. Eh? Uh, where and when and where they meet. You can never tell how the CPP is, how it uh, makes itself strong. Then you have so many mass organizations. You have so, and then you have organs of political power. Uh, even politicians of the ruling system uh, beg uh, for support for votes from the revolutionary movement. So, uh, and now you have an NPA uh, which has uh, which is in all the, the strategic uh, strategic points in the country favorable for guerrilla warfare. Uh, so you know, I think uh, at one time I said what the revolutionary movement uh, uh, needs now are young, very young people who are daring commanders and daring fighters who can launch tactical offensives as often as they can. And um, you need the young man Mao in Chinkansan or the young Fidel Castro in the, in the Sierra Madre. Don't expect me to be the daring commander. Eh? The young people should take over. <laughs> Can take over. I've been there before, no? As a young man uh, uh, with uh, uh, strong bones and muscles. Yes, I was there. So right now, what you need are um, uh, Mao, the young Mao, and the young Fidel Castro. And uh, you see, I should have said this before when you asked, uh, oh, what do you do with the pandemic? Uh, is it, uh, does it inhibit the arms struggle? No, there are always, you know, uh, I should have said that uh, the enemy keeps on attacking. Um, you can give them, uh, uh, the NP can easily gives the attacking forces uh, a lesson along the way. They don't know where the NPA is. And <clears throat> the, uh, it's to the advantage it's to the advantage of the NPA that the AFPN police come attacking. That's why I now call them the uh, transport and supply officer of the People's Army. And they attack, they bring their arms, and they don't know whom they're attacking. Instead, they get ambushed, or they get landmined along the way. Uh, and uh, they lose the weapons, and the NPA gets the weapons. And then, there are always weak points weak points of the enemy, you know, uh, there are very small units of uh, the enemy. You have the police stations scattered all over the country. You have the checkpoints and uh, so many isolated points that are weak, which uh, an active commander of the NPA can, can squash anytime. So <laughs> it's only a matter of determining where the targets are, the soft targets, and even the supposedly hard targets that come uh, that come marching away from far away uh, to uh, where you are to your own uh, to the territory of the People's Democratic Government, they are easy picks. Uh, so uh, that is now the stage where the uh, uh, NPA and the entire revolutionary movement uh, are. And uh, I think. Uh, uh, well, what I'm saying as a uh, as something hypothetical, uh, 
that only means that at, in the meantime, the hypothetical is not yet being realized, no? Okay? But the situation is such that there is already a situation where the, uh, so many regimes using U.S. planned uh, counterinsurgency plan, so-called, uh, failing to destroy the movement. It's already more than, uh, you know, this uh, crazy Duterte that thinks he can finish. Uh, the NPA is about to be finished. If uh, in two years' time, if he tries to do something to extend himself beyond 2022, he is uh, he's putting his, uh, his uh, life directly online. And he, he will be finished off by his own, by uh, patriotic elements within his own force, armed forces. Because then, uh, within the system, it would be very obvious uh, that uh, he's violating the Constitution. And, uh, you see, he himself said, if I go beyond 2020, don't kill me. He, he has been telling that to his officers. But this crazy guy does not keep his word. No, he does, he has, he does not honor his word. He might try, and it would be to the advantage of the revolutionary movement. If what is very bad, he actually does. Because doing what is very bad will arouse the people eh, to do their best uh, to finish him off. Thank you, Tito. Um, next question, Tito. How does the New People's Army win the hearts of the masses? And how do, the, how do they differ from the armed forces of the state? Well, uh, what uh, the way to win the hearts and minds of the people is to carry out uh, uh, the general line of people's democratic uh, revolution. Um, what I mean is, you know, you just don't, you don't go to the people preaching, you know, the general statements of the program. Eh? Uh, you have to uh, understand that the program is a generalization of pro uh, on problems and possible solutions. So it is always uh, it is always important to learn from the people first. In other words, uh, uh, you have to test uh, the validity and the truth of the program by going by doing your social investigation and class analysis. That's what our cadres and uh, mass activists. Uh, are for. <clears throat> they have to learn from the masses. And by learning from the masses, they will know how to arouse the people. You can arouse the people only if uh, they uh, see, if they see and feel that you are responding to their needs and demands, which you discover first by learning from them. And uh, when you arouse, after arousing the people, um, then you can easily organize them. So, uh, right now, the, um, uh, the, revo the revolutionary movement has several types of organizations for making revolution. Uh, you have the party, you have the mass organization, you have the people's army, you have the organs of political power, and there are many specialized organizations that uh, attend to the needs of the people, including health, uh, including social programs. There are all sorts, endless sorts. Um, endless kinds of, uh, of organization. Then, um, when you have done solid organizing, day-to-day, uh, -day, uh, in the day-to-day -day effort to win the hearts and minds of the people, then you can mobilize them for bigger actions. The bigger mobilizations you can make, the bigger number of people you can recruit. So you don't ever go into, you know, into uh, big campaigns uh, without uh, engaging in solid organizing. Uh, when you engage in mobilization, it means to say you have some amount of organization. Huh? But the point is, you mobilize people uh, by conducting campaigns in order to raise the level of organization. So you have to pay attention to solid organizing. That's the way how to... Uh, uh, how to uh, win the hearts and minds of the people. You call it AOM, eh, within the framework of PDR. Oh, that's a mathematical formula. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much, Tito. Um, I, I think um, 
Um, we're just gathering questions. Anyway, the floor is still open. Oh, uh, there is um, a question, Tito. Uh, can you talk about the agrarian revolution in the countryside? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, the main thing in uh, in the stage of uh, people's democratic revolution, uh, you know, uh, we must be clear, no? We use interchangeably these uh, synonymous expressions, people's democratic revolution, national democratic revolution, new democratic revolution. Uh, yeah, you use it, uh, any of these terms depending on what you want to emphasize. Well, when you speak of democratic revolution, uh, uh, it means you have to address uh, the land problem. Be uh, we call it the main content of the democratic revolution because uh, it is the solution to the main problem, uh, to the problem of the majority of the people. The peasants are still the majority of the people. And uh, when you address uh, their problem, you respond to their demand for land by undertaking agrarian revolution, then uh, you, you, win over, you win them over to the revolution and you will fulfill the main demand of the democratic revolution. And um, so this is how the revolutionary movement uh, has been doing uh, to act on the problem. Uh, you know, uh, first, the, uh, uh, the first measure to be undertaken is the uh, minimum land reform program. It means, uh, it means uh, reducing land rent eliminating usury, raising the wages of farm workers, um, raising the prices of the products of the, uh, of the, of the farmers or peasants at the farm gate. So that's minimum. Then when the revolutionary movement is strong enough uh, over a large area, it can go to the maximum. The maximum is confiscation of the land so that the land is distributed for free. Uh, to the peasants. Sometimes uh, in the hinterlands where land grabbers just take over the land uh, without, uh, without sufficient control, it is so easy uh, to, to take over the land. And um, so uh, the term, uh, alternative uh, term used for that is restitution of the land. Usually, it's poor peasants and indigenous people who are deprived of the large tracts of land by land grabbers, be they foreign corporations or bureaucrats, high bureaucrats, who just go to the uh, registration office and then uh, they, uh, they fake, uh, they, they, uh, they claim the entire tracts of land for themselves. Uh, but uh, in this case, uh, you know, they end up with having their own their their piece of paper, but uh, the uh, the revolutionary forces and the peasants or indigenous people uh, retain control over the land. So uh, that's one possible uh, immediate uh, way of uh, depriving the land the the landowners the landlords of the land that they try to grab from other people. Next, Tito, can you give you uh, can you give us for your analysis about the expected action that the U.S. imperialist will do once the proletarian revolution is close to victory, and what about the role of China on the scenario if the proletarian revolution is close to victory? At every step, uh, you know, um, uh, the U.S. will always interfere at every step of the way. Uh, the U.S. has always been interfering. Uh, there is no strategic plan made by the AFP that is not designed uh, with, uh, uh, with the Pentagon in the know and with the U.S. Pacific Command in charge. Uh, and the, and um, generals, Filipino generals themselves are agents, are assets, or assets of uh, the Central Intelligence Agency or... Uh, the Defense Intelligence Agency. So the U.S. has always something to do. Uh, and, you know, uh, the military assistance agreement still continues. 
arms come from the uh, from the uh, uh, from the U.S. Uh, the U.S. is in charge of the strategic planning, uh, intelligence, uh, supplies, uh, everything else needed uh, by the armed forces of the Philippines. It's a puppet army. The AP is a puppet army. So right now, the U.S. is very much involved in, uh, you know, uh, sometimes some people think that Duterte is, uh, is uh, becoming a uh, more of a Chinese, uh, more of a puppet of China. No, he is for China only because he can he can get uh, uh, he can get uh, graft money, corruption money, both from uh, chi possible Chinese loans as well as from criminal Chinese syndicates. Uh, but uh, Duterte is uh, is terribly afraid of offending the U.S. As a matter of fact. On November 10, 2017, uh, Duterte promised to Trump that he would wipe out, he would terminate the peace negotiations, uh, and he would wipe out the uh, uh, NPA. Uh, and so he was very happy with that. No? So that shows he's, uh, he's a died in the wool uh, traitor, uh, a puppet of the U.S. So, uh, certainly, if uh, if uh, the reactionaries in the Philippines are in danger of um, of losing the fight to the People's Army, the U.S. will intervene to the extent of engaging in outright aggression. Right now, it has rotating troops in the Philippines, and the U.S. Uh, can easily uh, increase uh, the forces of aggression that it can that. Uh, uh, it would deploy, it would deploy certainly, if the reactionary state is in danger. Uh, but then U.S. is weakening. It is today an accelerated uh, part of the plan. You know, it has been engaged uh, since uh, 1990s, since 1991, and was overconfident that the Soviet Union uh, had already collapsed. It engaged in ceaseless wars. And these have weakened the U.S. Aside from the uh, economic uh, malaise, the economic crisis of the U.S., uh, it has been uh, struck by uh, excessive cost of the wars of aggression since 1991. It has lost uh, six trillion dollars without any substantial return. So um, I think by the time that the the uh, Philippine Revolution will be about to uh, win victory. Um, the uh, the anti-imperialist and democratic struggles all over the world, and uh, the world proletarian revolution has has resurged to an extent that uh, uh, they would um, castrate, huh? make impotent huh? U.S. imperialism. Because in the first place, U.S. imperialism right now by itself is weakening. That's why China is uh, seen as the big challenger. And these two are now fighting. They're not trying to cut each other down. Uh, so one, U one U.S. analyst, a uh, book writer, uh, wrote about this, to see this gap. And uh, these two imperialist powers try to... Uh, cut each other down, try to counter every move uh, that uh, that the the other thing had to put down China. But the the U.S. is on a uh, on a course of accelerated decline. And um, while the two uh, intensify their struggle, opportunities opportunities can arise. Eh? Uh, the contradictions between between two imperialist powers can generate opportunities for the revolutionary movement. Just as you know, within the Philippines, the revolutionary movement always takes advantage of the splits among the reactionaries. So when the reactionaries are split, eh, they rival each, each other in the uh, competition for power. Uh, you know, uh, there are certain opportunities generated by such internal contradictions of uh, uh, the reactionaries. So that would be also the case. Um, 
the interimperialist contradictions will create uh, more opportunities for the revolutionary movement to uh, to rise up. Tito, next question. What is the stand of the Communist Party of the Philippines towards the uprising movement that is happening in the Hong Kong? Well, you see, uh, historically, you know, uh, Hong Kong properly belongs to China. Eh? In, in, in the way that uh, West Philippines see does not belong to China categorically. Uh, it was British imperialism that uh, took away <laughs> Hong Kong from China, okay? So, and uh, there is, uh, there has been a compromise with the, between the British and, uh, and uh, uh, China that uh, Hong Kong would retain its autonomy. But now you have in China a country that is no longer socialist, an imperialist power, and it is trying to deprive the people of Hong Kong of autonomy and their rights. So you have an imperialist power trying to um, to dominate uh, a part, uh, an autonomous part of China. So uh, the position of the CPP is to oppose uh, the anti the anti democratic actions of the imperialist power of China against the people of Hong Kong. Um, the um, uh, the people of Hong Kong uh, deserve integra integration in the future with a socialist China, but not with a uh, imperialist China. And uh, it is premature uh, for China to uh, end the autonomy rights and all the democratic rights of the um, of the uh, Hong Kong people in the meantime. So uh, the CPP is supportive of. Um, is supportive of the uh, Hong Kong people's struggle to maintain their autonomy, rights of autonomy, and autom and uh, democratic rights. Uh, you know, China tries to say, oh, it's the U.S. The imperialists trying to make gulu in Hong Kong. No, that's not enough argument. To, uh, the, you know, the Hong Kong people have already been outraged by by abductions, you know, uh, by previous abductions. That's why, you know, people are angry in Hong Kong because uh, the uh, Chinese uh, authorities simply abduct people from Hong Kong. And now they are now trying to impose a, a national security law like, uh, like the state uh, terror bill of Duterte. So uh, the CPP is sympathetic to... Um, to the Hong Kong people, in so far as the, uh, their autonomy and their democratic rights are being violated by imperialist uh, China. Thank you so much, Tito. Next question, Tito. Um, if you have more masses killing made by the armed fascist government, aside of the masses, can we build another group to counter a track in the urban? Uh, you see, uh, we have experience of the Marcos dictatorship. In 1972, uh, he declared martial law and clamped down, suppressed the legal organizations, he wiped out the legal movement. Duterte can do that, no? Uh, the, the biggest political organization that was patriotic and progressive was Kabatang Makabayan. What did Kabatang Makabayan do? Eh? It went underground completely. And then uh, the, there would be uh, new, new uh, initiatives by pe uh, people who are democratic-minded, no? Uh, the, the, um, uh, the fascist regime will try to, uh, to attack, to tag every shoot, no? Every up, every, every new fresh shoot of uh, democracy. Uh, but then the conditions, uh, uh, the political and economic conditions would continue to deteriorate. And more and more people, an uncontrollable number of people, will keep on rising up. 
I'll tell, I'll, let me let me give you a historical background. In 1971, there was the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus, and so and the KM Kabatang Makabayan was targeted. So even at that point in time, the M, the KM was already was already um, um, alerted, no, alerted, and many of the KM members. Uh, went to the countryside to become NPA. So thanks to Marcos, the NPA became stronger with more determined, uh, educated youth eh, and young workers joining the NPA. The, the NPA, the membership, uh, you know, the party membership underground in both urban and rural increased by the thousands. And also, also the NPA increased in strength by the hundreds at first, and then later on by the thousands. And they, sp they were spread out in the country. Practically, Kabadang uh, Makaban became the, uh, the seeding machine of the revolutionary movement because Kabadang uh, Makaban was nationwide, nationwide in scope. And so it had members all over the country, and they became party members and NPA. So, thanks to Marcos, he became the best recruiter of uh, the revolutionary movement. And thanks to the, uh, to the uh, police batons and to the, uh, to the rifles of the, the, of the uh, reactionary state, uh, they, were good teacher, they were good instruments in teaching the workers and the youth eh, to join the revolutionary movement in the countryside. That is what is going to happen. And you, you, have, uh, you have now uh, a, a fascist dictator wannabe who is weaker in the head than, uh, than uh, Marcos. And who is uh, who's already old, right? like me. He's only six, you know, how many years? He's only a few years younger than me, you know? You know, when Marcos uh, started as a fascist dictator, he was much younger. And he was an Ilocano. Uh, taking advantage of the fact that many of the uh, the AFP officers are in Ocano. This uh, this uh, uh, former double mayor is just using Ilocanos. Eh? He's just using some Ilocanos like Lorenzana and uh, Esperon and others. You know uh, that shows how you know how numerous are the Ilocanos in the puppet military. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, and you know, he's making the mistake of making his military officers uh, uh, make their heads swell, no? Uh, he's making their pockets swell and also their heads swell. These Ilocano generals might get rid of him as soon as the U.S. tell, uh, tell them to junk him. Um, I think, uh, you know, the Twitter does not even appear uh, uh, more frequently than... Uh, uh, once a week, you know? So, he's not only weak in the head, he's already weak in, uh, uh, in body. And uh, I think that indicates uh, his uh, uh, finity, his finiteness. He's a man of limited ability and, uh, and a man of limited physical capacity. And I saw it's all Joe that joke when he still uh, present himself as, as a strong man, very with uh, so many women and so on. No, he's, uh, I've heard about stories, you know, he can, he, he's incapable, he's, he has become impotent uh, in so many ways. The, um, to our audience, unfortunately, we are down to our last question. So um, thank you so much for participating and sending your questions to us. Tito, last question would be, um, how do you, what is the secret to keeping a healthy mind? The secret in keeping a healthy mind is to be active mentally and, of course, physically. Uh, there has to be a combination of the two. But, you know, the mind uh, is very demanding. If you don't feed information to it, uh, you know, um, <laughs> it will not serve you well. But so long as you keep on informing yourself and processing uh, the information that you have in your head, then, uh, you know, 
uh, the active mind uh, keeps on going uh, in uh, the capacity uh, to deal. Um, uh, I observed it during the pandemic, you know. I can actually prepare three articles in one day uh, and even sing songs. Uh. <laughs> if, if you keep on exercising your mind, uh, then uh, you keep uh, healthy mentally. And of course, some amount of exercise needed, though, because, you know, the temptation to keep on uh, facing the computer is always there, no? All right. Thank you so much, Tito, for the advice, no? Anyway, um, dyan po nagtatapos ang ating discussion. This is another productive day of learning and being woke. So, uh, while serving our quarantine sentence, mga kasama, apakasi mag-aral at matuto, stand by next week for our next discussion, espesyal na kurso pang masa, sabay-sabay natin yan talakayan on July 5, 2020, same time and same place. So, make sure to note this on your calendars and catch up this on our Facebook page, Anak Bayan Europa, and our Facebook group, ND Line Online, for updates. So, please invite comrades and your more and more friends to participate in our discussion dahil mas masaya mag-aral kapag mas marami. Muli, maraming sa Salamat po sa bakikibahagi. Ako po si Kasamang Christ, kasama si Tito Joma. Tito Jo, kung meron po kayong gustong sabihin sa ating mga audience before we end. May gusto po kayong sabihin, Ka Joma. Ka Joma, hmm. may gusto po kayong sabihin. Ay, hindi ko ba marinig. Ano na? Ah, pa, ano na paalam? Ah, yes. Uh, uh, Nagagalang ako na ano, maraming tanong ngayon, uh, so enthusiastic ang uh, mga nakikinig at uh, uh, mabuti na ganito nangyari, ibig sabihin matagumpay. Mayroon akong uh, palagay na matagumpay ang ating serye at uh, ako ay nagagalak na nakakuha kayo ng ilang kalaman na magagamit ninyo uh, sa pagkilos. Kaya ang mensahe ko sa inyo ay uh, ipagpatuloy ang pag-iisip at diwang mapaglaban para sa pambansang kalayaan at demokrasya at gawin ang lahat na makakaya para uh, may sakatuparan ang mga layunin ng pambansang demokratikong revolusyon. Maraming salamat ito. Mapagpalayang gabi po sa ating lahat. Pagwawasto, magdaluyong Narito ako Para ang galat na lahat Na mulo Magiging muog Na muog Bakit ating hinahanap Tung paglalapat ng pamumuno at pagkupat sa masa. Kumabalikwas. Narito tayo para sa pagkakaisa, pagsulong narito tayo para sa pagwawasto, pagdaluyong narito tayo para ang kalat-kalat na mulo. Magiging muog na buong Pagkakaisa, paglaban Pagumpay sa ating bayan Ay ang bagsa da Bye.
Oh, oh. 